Hello and welcome to your A-level sociology introduction at NIA, ready for year 12. Obviously slightly different than we would normally do um, because you're not here in the classroom with us. But we've got some activities for you to do and some information about the course that will hopefully get you started. Uh, I'm Ms Fletcher and I'm going to talk through the course with you today. I'm going to give you some recommended reading that you can crack on with over summer and talk through the transition task that you may have been able to access already. So the first thing that we are going to do is meet the rest of the social sciences team. First up we have Mr Burton. Um, he is currently teaching psychology but will probably be psychology and sociology come September. He enjoys teaching criminal psychology because that allows him to look at the extremes of human behaviour and obviously the less normal or average human behaviour than we look at in general. And he used to sing in a band. That's his interesting fact. Here we have Miss Nixon. She is joining us in September and we are hugely excited to have her. She's extremely enthusiastic and absolutely loves teaching sociology. Um, she loves talking about equality and things that are important and happening in society. So she will bring lots and lots of enthusiasm to the subject. And her interesting fact is 52 pairs of shoes. I guess that's one for every day of the week. Miss Smelling is one of our part-time social sciences teachers, so he is in on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. He has lots and lots of experience teaching social sciences and really, really knows his stuff when it comes to the subjects. He's met lots and lots of famous people and also taught a lesson with Tony Blair, the previous Prime Minister. And during lockdown, he has come to realise the importance of spending time with family and friends. And then there's me. Uh, I'm Miss Fletcher. I love teaching social sciences because I love opening up the minds of young people and allowing them to see the world in a way that they wouldn't normally look at. I like teaching sociology of education because obviously you're all in school and you can relate to it. And during lockdown, I have tried learning Spanish, although I'm not entirely sure how successful that has been. If at any point you want to read more about the slides or um, I'm talking too fast, you just need to pause the video and you can have a read of the slides that are on the screen. So let's get into a bit about what sociology is and what you can expect if you come to study sociology at NIA. When we were putting this together, I asked the students that we had in why they should study sociology. And two of the main things were it's fun, it's interesting, things like that. But I also had one example of a student describing how it helps them with all of their other subjects. So she said how it helps with her history lessons because they talk about some of the same theories. And she said it's also helped her in a job interview. She answered a question correctly that apparently none of the other candidates had so hopefully it helped her get that job if you ask me or one of the other sociology teachers I think it's a really really important subject to study because it gives you a deeper understanding of the world around you you all know what's going on in the world um, we can all read the news and see about inequality and everything like that but sociology really really helps you to understand the world that you live in and what goes on in that world which is really, really important, particularly at the minute um, with the world being so different to how it usually is. It teaches you about inequalities in society. So if you're passionate about different groups in society being treated differently or you feel like the Black Lives Matter campaign is really important to you, you'll learn much, much more about how those things are embedded into society and hopefully a bit about what you can do about them and also it allows you to build an awareness about yourself so it opens your eyes to maybe things that you've assumed are right but aren't actually right with the world or ways that people are discriminated against that you didn't really realize and also might help you to realize some maybe of your own prejudices um, as you are growing and developing your own minds at the end of the two years, you will have three exams. Each of these exams is two hours long. The first paper is education with sociological theory and research methods. So that's called education with theory and methods. 
In the education topic, I love it and students often love it as well. We look at schools and the education system and we talk about actually what does schools teach you? Do they prepare you for the world of work? Um, do they provide the same opportunities to everybody? In an ideal world, you should be able to go to school, whatever your background, whatever your gender, ethnicity, class, and you should be able to get the same quality education so that you can go on and get a good job. But does education actually do that or does it benefit certain groups in society more than others? You'll also look at research methods. So if you're considering doing psychology as well, that's really links really well with psychology and there's a lot of overlap there. But basically it's about how we learn about society and we might be able to say that there is racism in society but how do we know that for a fact and we have to do research to do that so we have to go out and ask participants or we can observe people and things like that and sociological theory we're going to do a little bit about today in the induction session so i won't talk too much about that now your second paper looks at two different topics. The first one is families and households, and you will do that in year 12. The second one is also an optional unit. It's probably going to be mass media, but if the teaching staff change by the time you're in year 13, we might be changing that optional unit. So families and households look at how the family has changed over time. So we're talking about the fact that divorce is more acceptable now, the fact that less people are getting married, everything like that and then we also in mass media look at the impact that social media has on society the impact that the news has um, advertising everything like that and then your final paper is the one that students really look forward to and that is crime and deviance again that has theory and methods questions in just like your education paper but it also has crime and deviance so we look at what actually makes a criminal what is a crime and what is deviant? Are there some things that we as a society class as a crime because they're illegal, but actually they're not bad or harmful and maybe shouldn't be a criminal offence? We look at the impact that crime has on society. So believe it or not, there is a group of sociologists who think that crime is actually beneficial for society. So we look at whether we agree with that or not. And we look at why certain groups in society commit more crimes. So Marxists that we're going to look at a bit later would say that the reason that poor people commit more crimes is because society doesn't allow them to get money and resources by the conventional ways. So they have to commit crimes to get those. So we look at lots and lots of different approaches with that. You have you will get assessed on three different areas. So the first thing you'll get assessed on is your knowledge. And that's literally what do the sociologists say or what are the statistics and things like that. But where the real skills come in is applying that knowledge to a range of issues. So it says there knowledge and understanding of sociological theory. One sociological theory is feminism. And it's all well and good that you can talk about feminism. But actually, what you need to be able to do is apply feminism to the education system or apply feminism to the mass media and how women are represented in the media. So that's your AO2 skill. Finally, you will also get marks for your evaluation. This is the thing that students start off struggling with the most, but by the end of the year, they have really, really critical thought processes and are able to evaluate everything. One thing that I say to students to practice evaluation and because it's good practice in life is to never accept anything I say as a teacher as fact. You should always be questioning what you learn and you should always be thinking about is that right? Where is the evidence from? But what about this? So in your sociology lessons, there will be loads and loads of opportunity for you to do that. If you're quite an opinionated person, you'll find that quite easy. And what we'll do is we'll give you a chance to articulate yourself well and be able to actually write that in exam questions. If you're not an opinionated person, hopefully after a few months studying sociology, you will be. If you want to get a head start and you want to do some recommended reading, these two are two sociology textbooks that you could look at buying. We do use different sociology textbooks in school and you will be provided with a copy that you can borrow for your time at NIA, but we will need it back. So this would be alongside that an extra reading. There is no 
necessity for you to buy that book. You will not be at a disadvantage if you don't have it. These three books here are, if you are interested in sociology, just some extra reading that you could have a look at. I'm not going to sit here and say they're easy reads or they're good bedtime books because they do talk about complicated issues and sometimes do that in complicated ways. But if you're interested in them, they're fascinating books. This is no why I'm no longer talking about white to white people about race, and that's all about racism in modern society. This one is called Chavs. And it's about how working class people often get a bad stick and often get criticised in the media, but maybe they should be given the benefit of the doubt sometimes. And this one here is called Invisible Women. And that is all about how society is structured in a way that we don't actually know how much we need feminism because we don't know how much women are oppressed. So we need to look, it looks at the data gap between collecting data about men compared to collecting data about women. Alongside this, you should have been able to download a sheet called Perspectives, the basics. And what we're going to do now is a little bit of a lesson about um, what the different perspectives are. And there's going to be some activities alongside that. So I'm going to make my face a little bit smaller so that you can see the activities a little bit better. So what I would like you to do on these activities is just think about what you see. You can pause the video if you want to have a look, but do you see a man facing forwards, facing at you, or do you see a man facing to the side? Both are correct. Have a look at this one. Do you see a young lady facing away from the screen or do you see an old lady looking at the screen? Final one on this, do you see a bunny rabbit or do you see a duck? So what these are is optical illusions and tricks of the eye and there is no right or wrong way of seeing them. And we can think about this in the same way for sociology. Society is a big structure with lots and lots going on in it. And there are lots and lots of different ways to look at it. You probably already have had discussions with people that you know about the way they see the world and disagreements. Maybe some big things that have happened recently, like the Brexit vote or coronavirus, maybe you think that we shouldn't have gone into lockdown, or maybe you think we shouldn't be leaving lockdown. But when you talk to other people, they often have different opinions. And again, like these images, there is no right and wrong. What we have to do is weigh up the strengths and the weaknesses of the different viewpoints. In sociology, these different viewpoints are called theories or perspectives. And there are seven listed there, but the top three, these three are the three main ones, functionalism, Marxism and feminism. The way to look at these is kind of like different gangs. They're different groups of people and they see the world in different ways. So if I got into the classroom, a functionalist sociologist, they would look at the world in a very different way to if I brought in a feminist and they probably have a bit of an argument because they see society in different ways. As a sociology student, you have to gain an understanding of all seven of these and you have to be able to apply them to the different areas. So let's think about the education topic. You would have to understand what a functionalist says about schools. You would also have to understand what a feminist says about schools. And the great thing about learning these in sociology is when you go out into the wider world, you can just keep applying them and keep considering what they would say about different things that you encounter. What I would like you to do here is just pause the video and either go online or um, using books, define these key terms. 
So society, you could probably just Google and find out what that means. But for the macro and micro and consensus and conflict, you will need to make sure that you find sociological definitions of those and not just general terms. Hopefully you got some answers a little bit like this. So a society could be seen as a group of people living together in a community. And in that community, there is generally some level of order. OK, so we could see society as the UK. We are a group of people living on this island and there are rules and there are laws, but everybody is a little bit different. So there is some order, but it's not completely structured. We could also look at the school as a society. When you join here, you'll be part of the NIA community, and that is a different society. We still have to follow rules, and there are they are linked with the laws of the land. But again, everybody is unique. And actually, the NIA society is slightly different to the UK society as a whole. When we're looking at theories, some of them are macro theories and some of them are micro theories. So a macro theory looks at the whole of society, looks at the big picture, whereas a micro theory just wants to look at individuals within that society. So if you were a macro sociologist, you would want to look at the whole of schools up and down the country and draw rules about them. If you are a micro sociologist, you would just want to look at individuals and how they feel within school and how school impacts them. On top of that, some theories are consensus and some theories are conflict. So a consensus theory, happy, smiley people, they look at all of the good things that are going on in society. But a conflict theory focuses on what's called disharmony. That focuses on really, really negative things that are going on in society. And a theory will be two of these. So you could have a consensus macro theory and a consensus micro theory and vice versa. You could have a conflict macro theory and a conflict micro theory. Keep these key terms in mind when we look at the next task. So what I would like you to do is have a look at your perspectives, the basics sheet. And I want you to choose at least three of these sociological theories. You, if you want to choose the main ones, they are Marxism, feminism and functionalism. If, however, you want to challenge yourself and look at some of the harder ones, you can pick some of the others. If you, again, want to challenge yourself, have a go at the challenge task at the bottom. So what you need to do is read your sheet. You can highlight it, scribble all over it. The first thing that you need to do is decide if that theory is consensus or conflict. So does it look at the positives or negatives in society? And if it is micro or macro, so does it look at the big picture? On that sheet, try and find one key name, at least. There might be more than one. Try and find three new terms that you think that theory has. And then look at what the main points associated with that theory are. So pause the video, have a go at doing that for the three theories. And then when you press play again, I will talk you briefly through what you should have identified and what the main theories are. So the first one that I am going to look at is functionalism. Um, this is a macro theory and it is a consensus theory. It is one of our main theories that looks at how society is harmonious and it looks at the whole big picture. There are lots of key names on there. One that you will use again and again is Durkheim and Parsons. So if you particularly wanted to highlight some key names, you should highlight Emil Durkheim and Talcott Parsons. And what you need to know about functionalists is they look at how society fits together. So they think that if the education system stopped working, the whole of society would collapse. If the health system stopped working, the whole of society would collapse. So they say that actually, the society as a whole is very functional. 
hence the name. They think every part of society has a role to play and contributes to the bigger picture. So they are very, very positive. If you've had a go at the challenge task, one of the good things that you might have spotted about functionalism is that yes, actually, lots of things do have a role. And as we've known with Corona, if those things don't perform their role, lots else can go wrong. So we were worried that the health system would no longer be able to function in our society. So we had to change the whole of our society to ensure that the health system could still function. That is a strength of functionalism. However, a weakness is that it is really, really positive. And actually, society isn't all that positive. For example, you, when you look at the school system, you'll start to understand that the school system doesn't help everybody. So it doesn't serve its function for the whole of society. Feminism is perhaps the one that you are most familiar with or have heard of before. Um, it is a conflict theory because it looks at the conflict between men and women, but it is also a macro theory, so it looks at society as a whole. There are lots and lots of different names with feminism. Um, some on that list are Rosa Parks, Naomi Wolf. Um, they are maybe less well known. You've also got some in there like Beyonce would probably class herself as a feminist. Lots and lots of other names that you might have heard of. And like you're probably aware, feminists just want equality between the genders. An important clarification to make is they don't want women to be better than men. They just want women to not get judged based on their gender. Um, and you can see from that list that there are lots and lots of different types of feminists. So some focus on the racism and feminism elements. Some focus on the improvements that have been made and say that there is hope for women, whereas others are separatists. They actually would like males and females to live in separate societies because they don't feel that we can ever live together harmoniously. Marxism is another one that you may have heard of. <coughs> Sorry. Um, if you study history or if you have a general awareness of things like this. <coughs> this is another conflict theory. Like feminism, it looks at how different groups in society are treated differently. So Marxism doesn't focus on gender, it focuses on class. And it says that rich and poor are treated very differently. Um, it is a conflict theory, again, like I said, and it is still macro theory. The main key name is Karl Marx, who obviously had the theory named after him. And Marxists would like equality. So they do not think that we should have a class system. They think we should live in a communist country where there is no such thing as rich and poor. If you gave interactionism a go, well done. That is a little bit more of a challenge. So interactionists focus on how individuals interact in society. So they are a micro theory and they are pretty happy. So they are consensus. They want to look at individuals and how we are defined by each other. So they would look at schools and they would look at how you as an individual create your school environment and how school creates you. This is a smaller theory and we don't look at it in lots and lots of detail, but it is a good idea to have an awareness of it because it allows us to evaluate some of the other theories. Collectivism is kind of the opposite, and that looks at society as a whole. So it is macro and it is also consensus. And it looks at how everybody works together as a whole of society. The new right is more a political party, but we do look at them in sociology. They are a macro theory again, but they aren't very happy with the world because they think we are a bit too liberal. The way to look at new rights is that they are very, very traditional. 
So they don't like some of the modern changes that have happened in the world. They would like to go back to a situation where women stay at home and men go to work. Um, they think that school should be much stricter and there should be academic subjects in school. They are often very Christian um, and right wing politically. So they are very, very traditional people. Postmodernism is one that students often really struggle to get their heads around. So well done if you picked this one. Um, Loyotard is the most famous sociologist. They are a macro theory and they're not really conflict or consensus. They just comment on the way the world is. And they basically do not think that there is any real truth anymore. So we live in a world where everything is changing very, very rapidly and you can define yourself in your own way. So take gender as probably one of the main examples. Now you don't have to define yourself as male or female. There are lots and lots of ways that you can identify with your gender and that becomes part of your personality. And postmodernists take that and say that actually studying sociology is pretty hard now because there aren't any real rules that we can draw about sociological theory. So like I said, quite a tricky one, that one, um, to get your head around. But the more you study sociology, the more you'll be able to come to terms with that. And it's a really, really good one to use as an evaluation. I hope those made some sense to you. Um, they will make a lot more sense when you are studying sociology. But what I really want you to take from it is that your way of looking at the world is not necessarily correct, just the same as somebody else who disagrees with you is not necessarily correct. And we have to try and take a balanced view on that. If this interests you and you want to do some extra watching, there are some really interesting videos here. So if you want to look at feminism particularly, if you Google YouTube the state of man, Reggie Yates did an extreme UK looking at feminism and if you find this particular clip that starts like this, he goes and interviews people who think that women have too many rights and that we need a campaign called menism and we need actually men to be fought for and men to have more rights. This second clip that starts looking like this is uh, about a new campaign that, of women who are actually anti-feminism and explaining why they don't think that feminism is needed in today's society. And this last one is just it's some interviews with people on the street, whether they think feminism has gone too far or not. So what I would recommend is having a read of those and just having a think, give your opinion, talk to your friends about it, talk to your family about it and just start being critical. You don't have to agree with everything you see and hear. Between now and September, there are lots of things that you can be doing to get you ready for sociology. The main thing that I would recommend is read the news or watch the news or listen to the news, however you want to do it. The best sociology students have an awareness of what is going on in the world, particularly at the minute. Coronavirus is sociology in action. So keep an eye on what is going on. Keep an eye on when it talks about poverty and how poverty is on the increase now. Look at what might start happening with taxes or the, how the education system has been impacted and changed. All of that is literally sociology in action. You also should have access to a sociology transition task. This is just some questions that you can answer to get you thinking about the kind of things that we talk about in sociology. So why do girls do better in school? Why are men more likely to commit crimes? Why are some crimes reported in the media, but others not? So if there was a murder, that's likely to be on the news. But if someone steals thousands of pounds from their company, that's not likely to be in the news. Why is that? How was your childhood different to somebody who was a child 100 years ago? And look at this one. Has COVID-19 impacted more vulnerable groups in society more than others. So when we talk about vulnerable groups, we're talking about ethnic minorities, 
poor people and women. They would be classed as our vulnerable groups. So think about has that had more of an impact on them? And like I said here, um, making sure that you're watching the news and write your opinion on the news. For now, your opinion is fine. We will then add to that sociological theory. Another copy of your extended reading is also at the bottom of that page. So we look forward to having you in September and we look forward to you becoming passionate about your sociological study.